Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. My apologies, it's been a little while since the last one. I actually took a little mini trip again this past weekend around Central Texas. My mini trips are not really anything really special. I'm just really driving around close by locations to Austin and doing little mini ghost hunts of sorts. So, so for a treat for everyone, I decided to go ahead and do a I guess mixtape of sorts on aliens UFOs combining three of them all in one place three short encounters so that way it is for your viewing pleasure one of them was from a suggestion but then I was able to get some of the other two off of the suggestion so it was a pretty good way of, of, of finding two other ones based off of one item so here they are for your treat the interesting thing is all three of these particular encounters happened in the early 1900s we're talking about the 1920s or so so quite fascinating to realize that all these three share that very very same similarity they just happen to be across different parts of the world all three of them completely unique very very interesting stuff and they all have their own very interesting subjects at least as you can see based on the title of the video here so the first one that I'm going to talk about is the one that's either known as I guess you call it the Segway alien or in some cases the hoverboard alien and you're looking at a picture of it here this apparently occurred uh, again sometime in the 20s 1924 to be exact there in a region in Spain called La Mancha region in particular it's in a town called Cuero again located there in Spain now the thing is the is this again occurred in 1924 so everything that was seen with regards to this humanoid figure and what it was writing on in no way should it have occurred back then obviously you see something like that today no problem but back in 1924 almost 100 years ago no chance at all so here's what occurred there a witness described uh, near a local rural church a short humanoid figure about 1.2 meters in height so smaller than your average human obviously and then on top of that they were wearing a tight fitting green coverall of some sort almost like spandex but they did look humanoid they had arms they had legs uh, they had a human like face um, it didn't look like let's say your average gray alien which had a uh, is also somewhat humanoid but still much different no this looked more human more manlike in other words and it had a rigid stiff position because it was standing on something whatever this thing was it was a circular platform of some sort it was standing on it and it was standing completely still because this thing this platform was moving it forward it was propelling him specifically right above the ground so again imagine someone on a, on a little mini segue or one of those hoverboards as you see today but again back in 1924 and you have the idea that this thing the way this thing was operating on top of that the way the witness described it it had in its hands some kind of control panel of some sort that uh, he surmised that was used to operate this platform whatever this thing was apparently it paid no attention to the witness it just nonchalantly just moved across its way across that field near the local rural church and the witness the way they described it is they saw this humanoid thing just go further and further away until it went into some field I guess you could say like a force of some site of some kind and then just disappeared from sight it just went in there and it was never seen again quite a unique encounter now imagine walking around there seeing this thing not I guess it was not too close but not too far um, according to the witness it actually approached at one point within a couple of meters from him so again this thing was not really paying too much attention to the witness but there it was just nonchalantly on its little mini hoverboard just going from one destination to another completely oblivious or not caring about the witness seeing all of this and then it just disappeared in the far distance behind some field very very fascinating stuff so that's one encounter the next encounter occurred uh, uh, the a couple two years later back in 1926 this had to do with another place in the world this one the location was called Ancud Southern Chile and it had to do with a mysterious disappearance of a family relative only to reappear a good number of years later so here's what occurred 
there was a guy by the name of Marcelino Zaldiv Zaldivia. Again, this was 1926. He was living there in Ancud, there in southern Chile, sleeping on one night in the porch, uh, when all of a sudden he realized that his brother, I don't know how, maybe he woke up at night, maybe something woke him up, but his brother was gone. Uh, I don't know how old the brother was. The article didn't describe it. Marcelino, again, was 18-year-old, so presumably his brother was somewhere near that age, just based on how families have babies. They always have uh, babies pretty close to one another in terms of date, but the brother was gone. He was completely gone. Marcelino never, ever saw him again. Well, cut to the year 1976, so again, 50 years later, um, by that point, Marcelino had already lived a full life. He uh, moved away, I guess moved back, who knows. But he was back in that same area in 1976, 50 years later. He returned to that very same home that he had uh, lived in back in 1926, the very same one that his brother had disappeared from. And he was feeling nostalgic. He decided he would visit this home, I guess, and see what it was like, reminisce about the old times. And when he went to the home and he walked inside, there, much to his shock, he saw his brother. A full 50 years later, his brother was now there in the living room. Presumably the home, I guess, was not occupied um, or was occupied, who knows, by someone else, maybe someone from another family, or maybe someone from the same family, but, you know, a couple of generations later. But otherwise, the brother was there in the living room, sitting on the couch. He recognized him. Marcelino recognized his brother. He was just older, obviously the same age uh, as he would be 50 years later. And there he was, old and in the very same clothes that he wore back 50 full years earlier. And so he approached his brother, but he had like a some kind of demented state of some sort. I guess he was there, but he wasn't there, if you know what I mean. And when that happened, he the Marcelino asked his brother, what happened? Obviously, that was the first thing that came to his mind. Um, he, he started wondering, what occurred? Please, please tell me. And that's when his brother, again, in his demented state, still was able to reply very very simple things he said one thing and that was that he had been on a boat and then he said a second thing stating please don't ask me anything more and when his brother asked why uh, because apparently by this point he had brought along another woman I guess it was maybe his wife, who knows, but the both of them were now asking his brother why. That's when the brother just said one final thing, and they said he said, they hear everything, and then that was it. Uh, no word about anything else as far as the brother mentioning something else, or if the brother, I guess, was able to snap out of it later on, who knows, but that's all the information that pertains to this unique encounter. So, uh, by this information, one can presume that the brother uh, had been on some kind of boat, I guess he would describe the UFO, spent all those years somewhere else and then was returned but wanted to make sure again that he didn't want to get anyone including himself in trouble because he wanted to keep silence on whatever had occurred to him. Now finally the last alien and UFO encounter cut to a couple of years later after that, 1928, has to do with something that occurred in Bolton, Lancashire, England. Another little short encounter. So, 1928, November to be exact, there was a young boy by the name of Henry Thompson. Uh, he was out late at night in the evening just playing with a gang of friends. He happened to, I guess, the location of his, uh, his play brought him to a dark alley. And then that's when he saw what he described the way his view was, he saw the backyard of a house, he saw three quote-unquote strange figures peering into the back of the house specifically and would be that area be a living room. So I guess he was aware of that house, the surroundings of it, maybe he passed there by, maybe he lived near, he knew in other words that based on their angle and what they were looking through the window specifically that they would be looking into a living room that obviously stopped him cold in his tracks to see these strange figures uh, the way he described it was they had some kind of 
silver piece item I guess on their head it was uh, like an oval shape of some sort um, they were wearing some kind of rubber suits he described it as being inflatable like imagine uh, something being filled with air maybe plasticky or rubbery that's what they, they look like they had dark boots on as well all of them and then on top of their head um, again it was a silvery piece of some sort transparent dome like more like a helmet as well and then on top of that they had these weird looking tanks on the back of their backs and with these tubes coming out of those tanks and I guess being joined to the rest of the suit so when he stopped dead cold in his tracks and was able, was able to inspect what these things were that's when much to his horror the middle figure because there were three of them the middle one kind of turned and looked back and looked back straight at him and not only that but it mumbled it's something it something alien like or who knows but it mumbled to the other two and then the other two turned back and then stared at him as well Obviously, there was a little standoff at this point uh, with regards to what was happening. He was able to describe, too, that their eyes were considered, I guess, slit-like. They didn't have any nose, and then he didn't see any mouth. So how they were able to mumble, who knows? But one of them continued by making a noise. I guess it was after a couple of moments of this standoff, one of them made a noise, a really, really strange noise, and that was it. The boy just ran straight out of there. Henry decided there was no more. Whatever happened to the these three beings he had no idea because at that point he was running in sheer terror and it sounded like these three aliens didn't really do anything to him afterward they didn't chase after him they didn't do anything but still very very bizarre very creepy when you think about it because imagine like if that person or that family whoever they were in that home would have noticed this they would have seen these three things looking straight at them from outside the home right into their living room what a, what a sight that would have been if they would have seen something like that so that that is it as far as the last encounter uh, for this for this video so so what do you guys think three bizarre tales all three of them occurring in the 1920s all three of them in separate parts of the world all three of them with distinct completely uh, different themes one is like a peeping tom the other one is the disappearing guy and then the last one is the alien or the ufo uh guy the one in the hoverboard or segue of some sort so if anyone has any more information on anything i might have missed with regards to these three unique tales please post those comments below it'd be great to hear so all right everybody thanks again as always take care